Thank you very much, Director of Ceremonies. I'd like to apologize that my voice is having a problem. But I will try my level best. Firstly, I would like to acknowledge the Metoini, the family, and I stand by the protocol that is established. It's very difficult to follow the footsteps of years. He <laughs> explained things. But my brief remark this evening is futuristic. I want us to think about how we should keep the principles and values that Comrade Marco Hausiku stood for. And my reflection is at a personal level how I interacted with him together with other colleagues. Firstly, in the 80s, as activists, Swapo Youth League members in Betu, when we were studying here. Secondly, as the president of Nantu. And thirdly, during the 1989 elections in Kavango. As I stated at one of the memorial services last year, Comrade Marco exhibited unique principles and values throughout his life. These principles and values including, included authenticity or originality, respect for the human dignity and fundamental human rights of every person, irrespective of status in society. He had foresight and abilities to strategize under difficult conditions, and the humility that many have actually already indicated. Now, in terms of authenticity and originality, Marco never attempted to change to be someone else than himself. It was demonstrated here that he stayed in Katutura when others were moving out of Katutura. He stayed in Soweto, in Safari in Rundu when others were moving to what used to be the white area. He stayed in the communal areas as where he was farming when others were going to commercial areas, mostly for status. So he was authentic and original. And he respected every person. On a personal level, when we were working with him, we were very young teachers. And whether you are an elderly person, a young person, he respected every person. If you want to look at evidence, when he was a member of parliament throughout his political life, you will not find any offensive language coming from him in the hazard of parliament. So when people were asking him questions, he will laugh and answer those questions with dignity, as a parliamentarian would actually do. And it was testified here that he respected every person. And in my view, is these principles and values that we have to sustain when you are talking about Marco Rossini. He served as role models for many of us. He taught us certain virtues as young teachers to take our responsibilities and NSI task seriously. He took Nantu, the union he led as the first president, to high heights and into a formidable union respected at the time nationally and internationally. One thing that rested in everyone who was in Nantu, we remember that Marco taught us. They were traveling throughout the night. 
they will go there after school. When there is a strike in Obaheke, they will go there. When there is a strike of teachers in Urugu, they will go there to give guidance on what to do. But they will never late any day at school because of their involvement in the union. And that's what we cherish up to now. That we're having meetings here in Uwitsuk the whole night, but we try to get to school in Uwitsuk in the morning. Therefore, no one found Nantu at fault, because all those people that led Nantu then were actually taking their responsibilities seriously. I have already talked about the authenticity and originality, especially those people that come from that region, especially the young ones. Because the question that we have to ask is, why was Marco original and authentic? Why was Marco respecting everyone that we are not seeing nowadays. And I think for me it is simple. One of the reasons is that the teachings that he received as a young child he kept those teachings. It's not only him, but all the people of his time, especially from that region, there were certain values that were taught at home, taught in the church taught at school, and they kept that as the values for their whole life. And I think at a political level, in addition to what people have said, there was a belief that Marco told everyone who has interacted with. For example, the understanding of public office, that it is about public service. And all the speakers who have spoken before me have demonstrated that. And like the near first said, Marco never forgot anyone because he's going up politically or professionally. He will relate to you the way he has related to you before he became a political office bearer. I think the lesson for the lesson for us for the future is. Why is it the case when it is not the case with many people? And again, there is a principle, there is a moral value that is missed. And many of us were told this moral value. That when you are going up in your professional and political career, your two feet must be grounded. In other words, you must be stand fast on the ground. And Africans will say, you would stand fast at the yes of your heart. And the reason for that is, when you fall from that top, there must be people on the ground who are prepared to catch you. And I think this is critical for all of us. In other values and virtues that we can learn from Marco, is that he was an attentive Listen. Some people say the reason why the reason why we have two ears and one mouth is that we listen more and speak less. In any meeting that Marco was involved, he will not speak a lot. He will listen and provide guidance when there are issues that actually need to be resolved. I have already said he treated people equally. And that is the principle that he upheld till his departure from this earth. And one thing in 1989 elections in Kavango, I always contested that Swapo should have never won that election if it was not for the leadership of Marco. And many people don't understand when I argue like that. For example, when the armed forces were demobilized. These people in Gavango were deployed to their villages. And the command structure was in place. And their task was to organize at these villages where they were. About how to 
counteract this, then obviously those areas should have been local areas. Marco used the structures of Natu as well as the structures of Nanso to mobilize in those areas. And especially Nanso after the school boy goes to Rutu was able to go back to the villages and confront the people that were there. That's how those villages were actually changed. And I think one of the things as part of his strategies and thinking ability is he had a forum where all the political parties, including the police forces, were participating in 1989 elections to look at the violence and other things. And because of his personality of listening and providing guidance, that's what helped to remain actually to address those tensions. So many of us and other people that are here, Ambassador Marusha is here, who was taking a lot of photos during those times. And they have all those photos. The party was asking what have you done with these photos. We were including Robert Tegeta was here. We were monitoring those elections as voting agents and counting agents. We have exactly, we know what exactly what happened there. But because the people that were actually voting agents and counting agents were people of integrity, there was no way how these people can actually deal with us. I remember in 1989, we went to a village called Kachinakachi for the election. And every meeting that we have to go to, the security force was monitoring and taking pictures of this. There was a certain brand for the failure that it was in charge of security board. When we had Gachinagachi, the people there slaughtered the cattle for the rally and so on. And Marco went to these police officers and invited them to eat with us. <laughs> and it was very difficult for them how to refuse not to eat. <laughs> And after eating, we're asking whether they are going to report anything about this. <laughs> and they say, thank you very much, we are going, we appreciate that you have invited. <laughs> the point that I'm trying to get to is, he was having strategies on how to deal with difficult issues. The question that we should ask ourselves, except making statements here, is how do we keep these principles and values alive? as our memories to Comrade Mark. And I hope they view that with little imagination, everything is possible. And some of the things that I have in mind is to record and document his life and contributions to the fight for national liberation and development after independence, before independence. Nanto, for example, has rested and said, during our time in NATO, leadership was not by chance. It was always considered who should be the leadership. And the humility of Marco, as he was, he refused to be the president. He has to be convinced to be the president. And one of the things that we did at that launching Congress was not to elect a secretary general. Because that is the heart of the administration. If we elect the wrong person or who is not committed, that will be the end of that. So a decision by Congress was taken that the executive have to identify a person who will be the Secretary General. And at the first meeting, Marcus Kapu was identified as the Secretary. Marcus, George here, Comrade Musiku, and all the others, especially we're full-time staff in the office. And we're sleeping on the floor because we're very clear about what is the objective that we want to achieve. And Nantu was very clear that the leadership of the organization must reflect the national character of the country. Therefore, there was no one group that was dominating. I remember 
said we are the majority, therefore we want to have more representation in the leadership. George said then we are not a national organization anymore. And therefore, the character of NATO must reflect the diversity of this country and so on. So I'm concluding to say we must find a way of keeping this memory. I know the people that have made some videos here, they were struggling to get basic things done. Obviously, Marco, in the case of Nantu, we have published something edited by Herbert Yao. We try to record that history. And I want to quote why it is critical that the memory of Marco is a state. He wrote the foreword to this book. And he said, I hope that NATO members will jealously guard and continue to build on the union's achievements with data. They should keep their eyes on their task as union members rather than on their individual interests. Since the task of every progressive organization overrides the interests of its individual members. How do we keep these values? How do we keep this? principles. Nandu, for example, can dedicate the day on which Nandu was launched to have activities that keep this actually alive. The criticism against us Africans is that we don't record, we don't document. I went to the Free State one time, they took us on a tour, they were saying, you see that house there? where the first president of the ANC used to live. And we say, which one? They say, that one. We say, why are you not least putting up a sign there as a memory? Then after that, they take us to the throw a poor tractor something in his work. The African woman. And when you get there, you feel sympathetic just of the records and the documentation. That are there. So I'm pleading to everyone this night, let's help the family to record, to document, and keep these principles and values alive. Thank you very much.